Yo, what up? Josh Rubin from East West Healing and Performance. Today I want to talk about the dangers of iron. Now, I am not an iron expert. I just want to share with you a bunch of my notes that I have from all my research, from reading and studying different people like Edie Weinberg, Hans Celie, uh, and of course Ray Pete, uh, in regards to iron in the body. Because a lot of people are dying, being diagnosed with anemia. The problem is there's many types of anemia. And I feel, based on the people I've worked with, a lot of the time it's actually misdiagnosed. And there's something else that's causing the anemia in the body, and it's typically a different type of anemia. And you have to think about that, because if you're diagnosed with anemia, you should say to your doctor, well, isn't an iron deficiency anemia? And you should educate yourself what iron does and what it is in the body and where you get it. And I'll talk about that, because it's very rare. Unless you've had an accident and you completely bleed out, or if you're in the middle of your cycle and you really have heavy bleeds and clots and you get a blood test, you could be anemic at that point, but you're not truly anemic. So you should say to your doctor, well, am I B12 folate anemic? Am I... Per do I have intrinsic factor anemia, which is pernicious anemia? Um, do I have thiamine anemia? Am I copper anemic? Um, am I uh, vitamin C anemic? So there's many types of anemia, and your doctor or practitioner should tell you, this is a type of, of anemia you actually have. And most of these anemias can actually be reversed by eating the right digestible foods in the right amounts, the right ratios for your body and your metabolic demands to upregulate the GI system, the entire GI system, to actually increase these levels and get rid of this anemia that you're actually being diagnosed with. Now, iron is actually quite a unique mineral because... There's no mechanism in the body to actually excrete it in the body once it's absorbed. Now, of course, we can get it from a lot of refined foods, pastas, breads, things like that, cereals. If you're using iron pots, you can get it in high amounts from using iron pots and things like that. Of course, you can get it in alcohol. You can get it um, from taking supplementation. And of course, according to Edie Weinberg, over 30% of all pediatric deaths, all pediatric deaths, are secondary to iron supplementation. Now, as we grow, we actually need more iron as we're younger. When you're pregnant, your iron, you actually need more iron to help you and the growing fetus. So there are times when we need it, but you can actually get it from foods, and you don't need to be supplementing with it, and we'll talk about this. Now, according to my notes here, I'm going to be going back and forth, so bear with me because I have a lot of notes I want to share with you guys. Humans have an iron binding, an iron binding protein in our bodies, right? which has a role in capturing iron, basically so microbes don't use it. Now, all bacteria in the body except lactobacilli, or lactobacillus, actually absorb iron. And part of it is because bacteria feeds on iron, but it's actually part of our protective mechanism. But humans have this iron-binding protein, which plays a role in capturing iron, so microbes don't overuse it, leading to bacterial overgrowth. But when the, there is an excess of iron, basically from supplementation or maybe eating foods like high in muscle meats or eating too much liver or using iron supplementation or iron pots or refined foods. So when the excess of iron goes up in the body, this actually overcomes our natural system of autoregulation. We can't keep up anymore. And now we actually increase the feeding to the bacteria, which can lead to bacterial overgrowth and increase oxidative stress. And if you study the work of Hans Celie and Ray Pete and many different people, Edie Weinberg, um, they talk about how unsaturated fats in the body, iron plus estrogen equals what's called lipofuscin. And this is an age pigment. And the simplicity of this is it actually decreases vitamin E in the body, it increases free radicals, it produces more carbon monoxide at the cell level instead of carbon dioxide, leads to oxygen deprivation at the cell level, lowers CO2, which is actually protective, lowers glucose oxidation at the cell, increases lipid peroxidation, and leads to aging and cell death, as well as age pigment or liver spots, whatever you want to call it. So let's look at some of these key points that I have. I've got about 10 or 11 key points here. Toxic heavy metal should never be ingested. Iron is a toxic heavy metal. We have no mechanism to excrete it. Now, when I say never should be ingested, I am talking about supplements. You should never, ever, ever, I don't care if you're one, of course, like Edie Weinberg says, over 30% of all pediatric deaths can be associated with iron supplementation. 
I don't care if you're 80 years old or pregnant, you should not be taking a supplement. That's my take on it based on my research and experiences because there's other ways to increase your iron if you need it at a specific point when you're pregnant, such as actually eating more red meat and drinking more iron juice with, um, iron juice, drinking more orange juice with the red meat, eating more liver throughout the week instead of one time a week because it's high in iron, and actually eating it with drinking orange juice at the same time because vitamin C actually increases iron absorption in our tissues, lowering the amount of white fish and shellfish you take in because it will increase iron stores in the body, and not drinking coffee at all because coffee prevents the reabsorption of iron in the small intestine. So if you need iron, there's many ways to increase it in the body if you really need it be before taking an iron supplement. The problem is over time, according to these many authors, um, iron accumulates in the body, we can't excrete it. And there's a problem with this because it can actually lead to many GI system problems, cancer, heart disease, joint problems, liver, and heart conditions. And this is according to Dr. E. Weinberg. Iron overload can actually lead to diabetes in the long run, hypothyroidism, quite interesting, infertility, impotence, lack of libido, uh, amenorrhea, dysmenorrhea, pre, uh, premature menopause, growth delay, failure to thrive, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, bipolar depression, chronic lung conditions, balding, premature aging, and osteoporosis. And it's pr pretty interesting talking about growth delay. Uh, let me look at my notes here. Uh, there was a, re a research done in the American Journal of Epidemiology. And I'm trying to find my research here. And they found that they were giving in Africa and Asia iron to, here we go, iron in very low doses to school children. And what they found is giving iron in low doses to school children actually stunted growth and actually increased their risk of infection. And the children that didn't get the iron supplementation in low dose, their risk of infection went down and it didn't stunt their growth. Now, of course, you know, I'm not huge on just research and say, well, just because that says it, you know, end all be all. I just want to give you something to think about when it comes to yourself, your children, and what you're putting in your mouth. You should always really understand what you're putting in, in your mouth and your body because everything has a consequence. And it doesn't matter how healthy it is. You shouldn't put a supplement in your mouth just because a naturopath, just because I, just because someone else says to or not. You should do the research to understand why. So you feel it aligns 100% with your belief systems. Now, like I said, iron in the body can't be excreted. Now, whether we can't excrete it or we're taking supplementation or we're eating the wrong foods or we're using um, pots and pans that have higher iron in it, the problem is, like I mentioned, if you're already in a damaged metabolic state, you have bacterial overgrowth. A lot of the enzymes from cortisol and estrogen actually get downregulated in the small intestine. So now you have the pH issues. You can't break down starches. You putrefy proteins. This leads to increased ammonia and nitrogenous toxins, overloads the liver, yada, yada, yada. Bottom line is you end up with bacterial overgrowth in the upper small intestine because you can't break down these foods. Now you add iron into the mix. The problem with this is iron feeds bacteria. So what you're doing is you're perpetuating the bacterial overgrowth, which can overload the liver, overload the heart, overload the lungs, overload the body systemically, of course cause GI issues uh, lower in the GI system. You know, if the small intestine's affected, of course the large intestine, the colon, all these systems are going to be affected. And there's a lot of bacteria in these systems, especially bifidobacter in the large intestine, that in small amounts actually helps to take up stores of iron and bind to iron, not only to feed it, but to protect the body. So you don't want to overload on iron because you can actually perpetuate the hypometabolic state that you're in. Now, according to the work of Hans Helier, Ray Pete, and Edie Weinberg, they showed that iron is actually an essential part in cancer. Now, I've talked about cancer before, how, um, according to Ray P., I can't remember the other the guy's name. I'm completely drawing a blank um, on the guy right now. He was a Nobel Prize winner um, in the 40s. I just can't remember his name. I apologize for this. But he showed that it's the inefficient use of oxygen at the cell level and glucose that actually affects cellular respiration. Now, estrogen plays a part in this, and iron plus estrogen plus unsaturated fats, they all do the same thing at the cell level that cause oxygen deprivation and lower CO2. So this puts your body and your cells at more risk for developing disease, for developing cancer and things like this. So iron activates lipid peroxidation and decreases CO2. So now it tells your body and your cells to try to rely on fats and proteins instead of glucose for energy. 
And if you saw in my last YouTube, glucose is your cell's primary source of energy. It's your body's primary source of energy. That's what it wants. If it doesn't get it, it's going to try to produce it through gluconeogenesis and breaking down muscle tissue, but that releases free fatty acids. And the free fatty acids, along with iron actually increasing lipid peroxidation, decreases CO2 at the cell level. So it leads to altered cell metabolism, hypothyroidism, diabetes, and other diseases like cancer. Of course, like I mentioned, it causes cell aging. And through the oxidation of carbon monoxide, because any time you have iron in the body and it increases lipid peroxidation, you're going to get increased carbon monoxide instead of carbon dioxide. And as I mentioned, this creates an oxygen deficit at the cell level, leading to altered glucose oxidation. So instead of your cells producing carbon dioxide, which is very protective to the body, they produce lactic acid. Huge metabolic burden. Number one, it's inflammatory. Number two, your body, especially your liver, tries to reconvert it using stored glycogen in the liver, if you have it, to try to produce more glucose. But most people don't, so it's a huge metabolic burden. It can actually perpetuate the stress cycle. As I mentioned before, another key point is during aging, our tissues actually hold on to iron, which can actually promote its excess. So, of course, the more weight you're carrying, the more iron dominant you can essentially be. You can be super saturated in it. Now, we need it when we're growing. I don't mean by supplements. I mean by the foods we eat and from getting it in our body from the stores in the liver. But as we age and things in the body such as growth hormone and prolactin, etc., remain high, and other hormones such as progesterone and pregnenolone and other uh, protective hormones actually go down, iron actually accumulates. 